Okay, folks, this is part one of my lesson series on how to use Google SketchUp to design small structures, tiny houses, or any other project that you might want to work on, or even a large structure if you want. Google SketchUp is, they have a free version. Just search for it on the internet. Uh, uh, type in Google uh, SketchUp free version. You can find the download. It's, it's available everywhere. When you get it open, you're going to see a screen that looks like this. It's going to have a toolbar. This is your tools up here. It's got some menu commands up here. You're going to see a little gal standing here. You're going to see these green and red and blue lines. The green and red and blue lines are your north and south and up and down axis. That helps you to visualize where you're going to place the object and also to find the directions for going up or down or north or south. This little gal they include here is just a picture that they put in for perspective. If you don't want her, and we don't want her in our drawing, what you do is just use up in your menu command on the very left, you'll see a black arrow. That's your selection tool. Just select on her, click on her, and then right click, and then click erase. Okay? That takes her out of the picture. We don't want her in the picture. If you want to leave her in, you can, but we don't want her in her. Now, the other commands you're going to want to know right away is how to move the screen around so you can see the objects. Go up here to your, your uh, toolbar and you'll see this uh, control here and this cursor with the blue arrow circling around that is to rotate around an object so you can see an object. Now if you click you can see that I can move the screen and rotate the screen up, down, I can look underneath it, I can look from above it, I can look over it. The other cursor is the hand. The hand drags it in any direction. So I can drag it up or down, but I don't rotate over it. So I can drag it north, south, east, west, or up or down using the hand control. The other control is the magnifying glass. The magnifying glass lets you zoom in or out. You just click, and you can zoom in on an object. You can zoom out on an object. That's very good. You'll use that a lot because sometimes you need to get really close up to an object to see what you're doing. So you're going to use that command a lot. The other one is this magnifying glass with the arrows around it. When you click on that, it will automatically move you outside of your project. You see how it moved the screen? When you're working on a project, sometimes you'll get lost inside the project, and you need to find where your bearings are. So you click on that command, and it'll move you outside so you can see the entire project from a different perspective. That way you can relocate back to where you want to on a project. Now I'm going to use my magnifying glass and get in here a little bit closer. Now we're going to build a small house. And if you are involved or want to be involved in the contest I have going on, you can design a small house and submit it. And there's some great prizes starting at $500 for grand prize for tiny houses. So I'm going to design a tiny house just to show you how easy it is to actually de design tiny houses using SketchUp. So we're going to design a house under 200 square feet. And let's go with a 12 foot by 16 foot house. Now houses sit on a foundation, so I'm going to draw an easy foundation for you here. Let's put it on a cement pad. To start with, the first drawing tool you want to know how to use is the pencil. Go up here and select pencil in the toolbar. You can see that my cursor becomes a pencil. And on the axis lines, I'm going to go right to the point of the axis. You can see it turned yellow. And I'm going to click on that. Now I'm going to draw a line. You can see that it draws my line wherever I want to. Wherever I click, if I click again, that's where the line's going to stop. So don't click yet. I'm going to draw my access line along the green line. But I want you to look down here in this right-hand box. See this right-hand box down here? Because I'm going to type in how long I want that line to be. I could just click, and it will click it to whatever length I'm stopped on. But an easier way and more accurate way is to type in the, the length that you want it. So I'm going to, on this green axis, you can see I'm on the green axis. Okay, because it, it, it makes that little red box. I'm on the green axis, and I'm going to type in uh, 12 feet, because that's how long I want that one side of the house. So 12 feet is 1, 2 for 12, and then you type in the comma, uh, and that means feet. Comma means feet, okay? Type in the comma, and then just click enter. Now I've got a line from there to there that is 12 feet long, okay? And I'm going to do the same thing. You notice that my pencil and my line stays connected, all right? So I don't have to reconnect it. If you get disconnected and you want to connect to a line, just click on pencil again and go down to the point and reconnect it, okay? Click on it and it'll reconnect it. Now I'm going to draw the other side of my uh, foundation, my cement pad, and I want it to be on the red axis going the opposite direction. That way it will be perpendicular to my other lines here, and I'm going to type in 16, comma, 
for 16 feet. That gives me a line 16 feet. Now I can go on the green axis over to this red line, and I know that this red line is exactly 12 feet over, and I can just snap it. You can see my line becomes green. I can snap it until I get a dot over there, and that will give me a line perpendicular to my other line. And then I can connect from that point over to my starting point again, and boom. It encloses my space. Anytime SketchUp is really smart that way. If you enclose a rectangle or a, a surface, it will automatically enclose it as a panel. So now I've got a panel, and you can see I can see it from bottom or top by using my rotating tool. I can rotate it all the way around this. Now that's going to be the start of a cement pad. But a cement pad isn't just a flat panel, is it? i got to make this thicker so it looks like a cement panel. The next tool you want to use is called the push-pull tool. Up here you'll see a box with a red arrow in it. Click on that. That's your push-pull tool. When you rotate that over a surface, you see that the surface changes, changes to have a bunch of little blue dots in it. That way you can see that you're on top of a surface and you're going to pull the surface. So what I'm going to do is click on it and then I'm going to pull it. I can pull it up or I can push it down. See that? I can pull it up or I can push it down. And I can just stop and it will stop it wherever I let go of the click. But as long as I hold the click, I can keep moving this anywhere I want. Now I want this to be a specific thickness. So I'm going to type in how thick I want it to be. Let's go with six inches. So I'm going to type in six quotation marks. Quotation marks, you see the little double, R, uh, double marks down there, are quotation marks that mean inches. So I'll type that in again. Six quotation marks means inches. And then hit enter. Now you notice it makes my pad now. It makes my pad with all my corners on it. Six inches thick. Neat, huh? So I just made a foundation, but that doesn't look much like a foundation. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to paint this. Up in your toolbar, look for the paint bucket. Grab your taint, paint bucket, and a little menu will open up over here. This is all the materials and, and colors that you can use when you're painting. And you can also download a whole bunch more, which I'll show you how to do, but these are just the ones that come standard with SketchUp. So I'm going to go over here where it says Select, and I'm going to click on Stone. you got a little menu here. Just find Stone. And then I'm going to rotate through the menu until I find the one. I'm going to use this one here that says stone vein gray. I'm going to click on that. Now that fills my paint bucket up with that material that's right there. And I'm going to click on this surface. And it's going to paint it that color. Really neat, huh? And I can do the same thing on the front. And then using my rotation tool, I can rotate around my object so I can see it. Using the paint bucket again, click on the surface and it paints it. Rotate around to the other side because you don't want to leave anything unpainted. Now this is the fastest paint job you've ever done, okay? Much easier than when you actually paint an object. Just click on it and click the surface. And you can even rotate underneath an object to see the bottom of it. Use your paintbrush or paint bucket again, click on it, and now you've got a cement pad foundation to start your house on. Now you can do any type of foundation you want with this. The cement pad is probably the easiest for beginners, so we'll start with that. So now I've got a cement pad that's 12 foot by 16 foot to start my house on. I can close this paint window because I'm done with it. And I'm going to start building my walls and my roof on top of this cement foundation. So that's the easy way to start a foundation, folks. Okay, so now that we've got our cement pad foundation to start with our house, let's put some walls and a roof on this. And there's some easy ways to do that. First thing you're going to do is you're going to go up and grab your pencil. Okay, go to the corner where you want to start your wall, and it will automatically click on it. See how it clicks there? Click on it, and then in the north, which is up and or in the blue line, blue axis, which is the up and down axis, I'm going to go up on the blue axis, and I'm going to make my wall eight foot high. Now you can make your walls any height you want, but eight foot or ten foot is generally the rule that they use for a standard size house. Most house walls are eight foot high. Some house walls have ten foot high walls. Some might even have 12 foot. So I'm going to type in uh, 8 foot. Again, that's 8 comma over there. And that will give me a line 8 foot from there up to there. Now, my pencil's still connected. And I'm going to draw, I could draw a line over here and then down. But a simple way to do this is to use the next tool, which is the rectangle tool. Go up here on your toolbar right next to the pencil. You'll see a box. That's a rectangle. You can see I get a little rectangle next to my pencil now. Click on the top of your wall and go to the opposite point down here. You can see I'm down here at the bottom and just click on that and that creates a rectangle panel and it fills in the panel for me. So there I just saved myself a bunch of steps and I created my first wall panel. Okay? Pretty nifty, huh? Now, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side 
And I'm going to do just these two end walls first because it's easier to do opposite end walls and then do opposite end walls than it is to do all four walls at the same time, I think. So again, I'm going to take my pencil and from that corner there, I'm going to go up on the blue axis, eight feet, eight comma, and then I'm going to use my rectangle tool again from that corner point down to the opposite corner point right there, and I'm going to create my back wall. Now I'm going to make this the front of the house and that the back of the house, I think. Okay, so now I've got two panels, but of course those don't look like walls because they're not thick enough, so we're going to have to do something about that. But before you want to make your walls thick, before you use your draw tool, you want to put in your doors and windows. That's the easiest way I've found, okay? Putting in doors and windows is actually not complicated at all. The next, the next tool you want to use is your tape measure. Up here next to the eraser, you've also got an eraser up here, and next to your paint bucket, you've got a tape measure. Click on your tape measure, okay? And this allows you to measure objects be, without drawing a solid line. And also allows you to make guide points, and guide points are really important when you're designing things. Use your tape measure and go down to the line where you're going to start your door. Now, you notice when I'm going along here, it turns into a little blue uh, circle and says midpoint. That tells me that that's exactly middle of that line from there to there. The middle point is right there. I'm going to click on that. And then on the blue axis, going up, on the blue axis, I'm going to go up. And I'm going to put my door at 6 foot 8 inches. I'm going to use standard size doors for these houses. So 6 foot 8 inches is a standard size door. You can make them any size you want. But there is 6 comma 8 quotation marks for 6 foot 8 inches. Type that in. That gives me a line at 6 foot 8 inches on this wall as a guide point. Go back up to my pencil. And along that guide point, if I go along it, you will see that it automatically snaps to the middle. This is the center point of that line. This is the center point of that line. Click on that. Now I know that a door is my door is going to be three feet wide you can make your doors any size you want but a standard size door is six foot eight high by three foot wide half of three foot is one foot six inches so i'm going to type in one foot six inches and i'm going to draw a line that gives me half the door width and then i'm going to draw a line from there down to my line where i want my door to start and i just snap it down there and then i'm going to draw over three feet because that's how wide my door is going to be draw my line and then from that line you can see I got a green point because I lost my point if I lost my point I can just go along and it'll find it there there's my green point the end point of that line at three feet click on that and then I'm going to snap that up on the blue axis back up to my start line and then back over to my start point this gives me a rectangle for my door opening now I'm going to remove that after I pull the wall don't remove it before or you'll you'll have a hard time pulling your door remove this or uh, leave this alone for now now we're going to do some windows using my tape measure again i'm going to measure from this point over to this point and it is it tells me it's four foot six inches so i want half of that because i want my window centered so half of four foot six inches is going to be two foot three inches so i'm going to measure over here two foot three inches return now you notice it gives me a little black dot there that's a guide point you'll use a guide point a lot when you want to locate where something is before you draw it go back up to my pencil and I'm going to click on that guide point and I'm going to make my windows two foot by three foot uh, standard size window so I'm going to draw a line over here half of the distance of the window of two foot would be one foot so I'm going to type in one foot then I'm going to draw on the blue axis I want the window to be three foot long so I'm going to type in three feet and then I'm going to go over here, the width of my window, which is two feet, type in two feet. And then I'm going to go back up to my line and just snap it because I know that that's already at the right length. And back over to my start position. And now I've got an opening there that is two feet wide by three feet long. And that's going to be a window. Let's do the same thing on this other side over here. Using my tape measure, again, I know that it's two foot, three inches to the center over here. So I type in two foot, three inches and return. That gives, whoops, where's my guide point? I didn't get a guide, I went the wrong direction on it. Now, if you mess up like I just did there, go up here to where it says edit, and you can see it says undo draw line. Just click on whatever undo is, and you can undo everything that you just did all the way back to the very beginning. So click on undo, okay? Using your tape measure again, click on that point, and on the green axis this time, we're going to go over two foot, three inches, and that'll give me my guide point again using the pencil click on your guide point I'm gonna go over one foot for half of my window I'm gonna go down on the blue axis 
And you notice that it automatically connected on that line. You can see that it made that line there, showing that it's the exact same length as that one, so I don't even have to type it in. And then I can click over here, two feet for the width, back up to my start point, and over there. Okay, so now I've got doors and windows. Looks like I didn't get a line created over here. Let's put a line in there. Okay, so now I've got my rectangles for my doors and my window cutouts, okay? And using my rotation tool, I can go around it here. Now, I've got this guideline in here. I don't want to keep seeing this guideline. You can take the guidelines out. Just click on Delete Guides in the Edit menu. Click on Delete Guides. That takes the guides out so you don't have to see them all the time. Okay, rotating around to the inside, I'm going to use my Push-Pull tool again. Okay, and I'm going to select on just the wall. Now, you could pull doors or windows, but I want to select the wall because I want to leave the door and window openings there, and I'm going to pull it in. Now, I'm going to make this wall four inches thick. That's a standard size wall. Two by fours are three and a half inches, and when you add drywall and sheathing on there, you're four inches. You could do a six inch wall or any thickness that you want, but a four inch wall is going to be a standard size wall. So I just pull this over. I can pull it any direction I want, but then I'm going to type in four inches return and that makes my wall exactly four inches thick now you'll notice something I lost my front panel this looks weird this don't look right that's because I pulled this surface over that direction and so now I need to fix this and I can do that really easily using the rectangle tool again select on rectangle select your top corner go down to the opposite corner point and click it and it puts the panel right back on so now I've got a panel with the openings for my doors and windows now to get rid of those all you do is use your selector again that's the little black arrow select on the box see that turn to blue dots and then just right click and click erase right click on those and erase them and now you've got your openings for your doors and for your windows on your front wall nifty huh okay same thing on the back I want to put a door in this back wall here I'm going to use my measuring tape, go to the center mark, up, I'm going to go 6 foot 8 inches so my doors are the same height on both sides of the house, okay, and then I'm going to use my pencil, find my center mark which it will automatically snap to, I'm going to go over 1 foot 6 inches because I want a 3 foot door, 1 foot 6 inches, draw my line, snap that down on the blue axis to that line, snap it over here 3 feet, and then take from that point, right there up to my height of my door and then snap from there back over to my start line and now I've got my opening on that door and again we're going to uh, pull this wall like we did the other one here I'll rotate this around so you can see it using my push pull tool select on just the wall and I'm going to pull, pull this in again set it at four inches now I've got my door there now when I rotate back around, remember, I'm going to lose my panel just like I did on the other side. And so just using your rectangle tool, go to that corner and back to this corner. And now you've got your wall panel back on. Rotate to the inside. And you can do this either from the inside or the outside. It doesn't matter. Just click on the opening with your selector tool and right click and hit erase. Now I've got doors on both sides of my house. And I've got two windows on both sides of my house. Pretty nifty, huh? Now, that's got the front and the back back walls. Now, let's put on the side walls. Okay, so we've got our end walls with our doors and window openings in them. We need to do these side walls. Let's get rid of this guideline that you can see along here first. Again, go up to your edit menu and just click on delete guides. That gets that out of there. Now, an easy way to do these side walls is just to use this. You could draw a line, but an easy way is just to use your rectangle tool. Click on one corner, go to the opposite corner and click and that will make your panel okay and you can do the same thing on the other side but let's put a window in this side first just to show what that looks like let's do a 4x4 four four window and we'll just center it you can put a window anywhere you want but I'm gonna center it and I'm just gonna go to the center midpoint and I'm gonna go up again six foot eight inches that way my windows are all at the same height as my doors and that's just a general rule is they usually put the tops of the windows at the same height as the doors so it doesn't look odd okay so I'm gonna go six foot eight inches and type in my guideline using my pencil I'm gonna find my middle mark and I know that half of, of four feet is two feet so I'm gonna go over two feet I'm gonna go down four feet whoops I messed up I didn't measure that line go up to my edit menu hit undo draw line it'll start over again click on my line on my blue axis I'm gonna go four feet 
on my red axis I'm going to go four feet and back up to my start guide and over to my start point and now I've got an a, uh, opening or will be an opening there for a four by four window on the side go on to the inside again using your push pull tool the box of the red arrow grab on the wall not on the door or on the window and pull it over four inches type in four inches hit enter that gives you a wall four inches okay now you got to put your panel back even though you can't really see it your panel is gone on that side over there so you want to well actually it's not it is there or is it no yeah it is there uh, you can put your panel back on grab your rectangle tool go from that corner over to the opposite corner put your panel back on okay go to the inside or whatever and click on the inside of the window right click and click erase now I've got my sidewall. See how quick that was? I got my sidewall up there. I can go up and click and delete my guides. I don't need those guides anymore. And I can go over and do the same exact thing on the other side. Uh, and I'm just going to put the same windows on uh, both sides. That'll make it a little bit easier here. Use my rectangle tool again. Click on one corner. Click down on the bottom corner. Now you'll notice something happened there. When I enclose this panel, uh, SketchUp also encloses any panels that might be connected to it because it doesn't know whether I want this panel closed or that panel closed. So it closes them both. You can just erase this panel since you don't want it enclosed right now. You want to be able to look down inside. Just use your selection tool, the little black arrow. Click on that panel and click erase. That gets rid of that panel so you can see inside. It just does that automatically. Uh, and now on this wall I'm going to put my window in. Again using my tape measure. Find the center point on that line. Go up six foot eight inches. That gives me my guide mark. Again, using my pencil on the guide mark center, I'm going to go over two feet. Down on the blue axis, four feet. Over on the red axis, four feet. Back up to my line that I started from and back to the point I started from. That gives me my opening for my window again. I'm going to delete this guide because I don't need it anymore. Rotate around to the inside of the house. It's starting to look like a house now, too, isn't it? And grab on the wall, pour it, pull it in four inches, type in four inches, and let go. Okay, my window, I'm going to select, and I'm going to cut my window out, hit erase. Go back around, and I'm going to put the panel. Now, you can see the panel stayed on these. Sometimes it'll stay, sometimes it doesn't. That's okay. I'm going to put the panel in just to show you how to do it. Put your panel back on over there. Okay, so now I've got four walls with my doors and windows cut in them. Pretty neat, huh? Four walls with the doors and windows cut in them. But that doesn't much look like a house. So let's go ahead and paint this so it looks like a house. We've got to paint the house. So I'm going to take my paint box, box, bucket, and I'm going to go over here where it says select, and I'm going to choose uh, let's with the brick and cladding. Cladding means the things you put on siding on your walls. And I'm going to select, let's use this uh, side, tan siding over here. I'm going to click that. That's the one I'm going to use. And I'm just going to paint these surfaces to make this look like it's actually got siding on it okay again rotate and then just use your paintbrush rotate and use your paintbrush okay and you can use your magnifying glass if you need to get in close on a surface or pull back you can use your magnifying glass so you can see the surfaces okay so now I've got that sided now that looks more like a house doesn't it okay that's looking pretty good I can close that menu you don't need my paint menu open anymore now I've got that sided so it starts looking like a house now while I'm at it why don't we paint this floor because I'm not going to use this as cement so we're gonna put wood flooring on top of this what I'm gonna do is go back up to my paintbrush and I'm just going to select and I'm gonna go down here and find wood uh, there's wood and I got a, quite a few choices here. I'm going to go with this uh, wood floor light. I'm going to click on that, and then I'm going to click that surface there. Okay, now, now I've got a wood floor on top of that cement pad, and I've got a nice look at that. That looks really nice. I've got a nice wood floor in there. You can use any material you want. Okay, and now I've got the the house pretty much situated, but I better put some doors and windows in here. So let's go ahead and start putting in some doors and windows. Okay, before we do the doors and windows, though, I want to show you that, say that you've got your house painted and you decide you don't like it. Well, unlike a real house that takes a lot of work to paint, you can change the paint on an object really, really easy. All you need to do is go up to your paint box, click on your paint can, your paint bucket, 
go into your paint menu and select on this color okay and it will show it up in here now I want to change this I don't like that material so I'm gonna to go to edit and I'm gonna change that color you will see when you click on edit you'll get this color wheel here you can change that to any color you want so I want to change this to that color right there I can change it to ugly purple Ooh, that's ugly I don't like that color there so let's change it back let's go to let, let's go to that color that's a little bit lighter tan than what I was using before maybe I want it kind of a greenish color now nah, I don't like greenish we'll go back over to this light tan okay that's a little bit lighter than what I had and I like that color there that looks kind of old-fashioned that's good I like that okay so then I can close it when you paint any surface that you paint with the same material you can change the color on that material and it will change it on all of them now that's really neat because then you don't have to go back and repaint every surface uh, SketchUp just knows that that that's what you want to do and so it will change the entire surface on all of them without changing other surfaces you notice my floor is still the same okay so now let's work on some doors and windows now this is the uh, really interesting uh, feature of SketchUp go up here to your your menu and find this box with the yellow arrow the box of the yellow arrow is to download materials and uh, things like doors and windows or furniture or anything like that you'll download it from the Trimble 3D library if you create a feature you can upload it using the orange box arrow but we'll worry about that later right now we're going to download what other people have created and what Google has created and you will need your internet connection on in order to download so click on that and in a minute a little window will open up that says Trimble 3D Warehouse and this is just full of thousands and thousands of designs that other people have created and then uploaded that you can use in your models okay here you got a little search window just type in what you're looking for we're looking for doors so I'm gonna type in doors and hit search and here you'll see a whole selection of doors you can go through and select any type of door you want here uh, and just choose whatever type of door you want I'm going to use this door right here and I'll click on it and you can see it's just a standard door uh, without a window in it or anything like that and I'm going to use that door right there it's just kind of a basic door click on download model and it will say load this directly into your SketchUp model yes I want to use this in the model I'm using so I'm going to click yes it takes just a second for it to download and then it will be attached to my cursor when it is downloaded and then it will show me where I'm going to place it here it says it's on the face and I'm going to place it on the face and I'm going to snap it right to that point right there. And I'm just going to click and that'll, that'll uh, release it from my cursor. Now you can see that this model is all in blue. It's one entire unit. And that's great because using uh, your other controls, you can move that entire unit. You can paint the entire unit. You can do anything you want with it. Now you'll notice that the door is facing the wrong direction. I've got to change it. I've got to rotate it. So that's the next tool you're going to learn how to use is the rotation tool. And that's up here in your toolbox. It is this tool that has these two arrows, one pointing one direction, one pointing the other in a circle. Click on that. Now you'll see that it gives me this uh, device for rotating objects. And you can rotate an object in the blue axis. In You can put it on an object and you can rotate it in the green axis. You can also put it around and rotate it on the, you can see it flip red and, red and back, back and forth. I can even rotate it on the red axis and you can rotate it in any direction I can rotate it over under or around I'm gonna rotate it on the blue axis because I just want to turn the face of it around so what I do is I just click till it shows blue click on it and then you're gonna you can see that you can move this around you're gonna choose what direction you want to start the rotation from I'm gonna rotate it starting on the red axis click again okay and then I'm gonna rotate that door right around so that it is facing the right direction and then click again now that moves my door permanently in the direction I'm doing I could rotate it again in any direction I want but that's a good start now the next tool you're going to use is the move tool up here next to your push pull box is the move tool it has four arrows pointing in different directions and it's red click on that that's your move tool you can grab any object and you can move it since this is already selected it's blue it's already selected I can just grab this and I can click and I can drag it and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag that right over to where I want that door and I'm going to click it and so it locks in place in that door okay now it may not the doors that they create may not fit the openings that you've created and I'm going to show you how to fix that using first using your drag tool again your move tool grab the top corner of the door and just secure it right into the frame okay now if you look you'll see I've got a little space at the bottom of the door and a little space 
at the right of the door and I don't want that that doesn't look right so I need to fix that now your next tool is up in the menu bar up here go up here and see tools click on tools and then click on scale now there's other tools in here but for right now concentrate on this is an important one click on scale and you'll see that a box will go around here with yellow bars let's open that again okay a box will will be on this with yellow bars and little green boxes in all the corners these are scale boxes and when you grab on one of these you can scale it in any direction I could pull it clear out and make that door six feet thick I don't want it six feet thick though that'd be wrong so I'm gonna just unclick on that and hit edit and undo scale and because I don't want that door to be that thick now I'm gonna rotate this down so you can see underneath here hit my scale again now you'll see that there's three boxes if you click this one it will pull it down around an opposite point without making the door go wider or thinner if you pull this one it's going to make the door go wider this direction if you pull the back one it's going to make the door go wider the other direction I don't want it to make the door any thicker I just want to pull it straight down so I click on that one right there and I'm going to pull it right down onto this line right here because that's where I want the bottom of my door boom it moves the door right down and it makes it exactly the right width so now there's no space around my door I'm gonna do the same thing on the side over here again I'm gonna to click tools and scale and then find this the green box now sometimes you have to get in and look but see there's my green box in the middle grab that and I'm gonna move that right over against that side uh, of the, the door there and now my door fits perfectly into my frame now when you have something selected and you don't want to select it anymore go up to your menu to your selector key and then you can click anywhere off of the model that you've designed just click on the ground or on the sky and that will deselect so that the door or whatever object you have selected isn't selected anymore then you can use your rotation tools and see if you got it in the right place and that looks really good I got my door right in my frame right where I want it to be and it's just the right thickness for a four inch wall so there's my door so that's how you put a door into a place okay now I'm gonna put two windows in here go back up to my download menu from Trimble, Trimble SketchUp and I type in windows and I'm just gonna select some basic windows here uh, let's go with these windows over here they look pretty good click download and yes in the, I want it selected into my model now I've got windows same thing they're facing the wrong direction but that's okay I'm just gonna put it on the edge there for now click off of it and then I'm gonna use my rotation tool now you want to see which direction you're rotating uh, it doesn't look like it let's see yeah I want to rotate it that direction so I'm going to take my rotation tool again and on the blue axis I'm gonna click and then I'm gonna click again and then I'm gonna rotate that over so that it is facing the right direction and then using my move tool again I'm just gonna click on that and I'll move it so that it's down there on the face near where my opening is. It doesn't have to be exactly in the opening because I'm gonna to have to scale this window. It's not going to be the right size, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate and move this around so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna use my move tool again and I'm gonna click on the corner of that window and I'm gonna drop it right into my frame. So now it's in my frame in one corner. Okay, and then I'm gonna use my scale tools, tools, click on scale, find my center, okay that one right there and I'm just gonna pull it so that it goes right into the frame right in there and then I'm gonna do the same thing for the bottom of the window so I scale it again that goes right into the opening click scale again again you're gonna have to find your middle one pull it up and right on the edge wherever the edge is of your window just click on it and that scales your window so it drops right into the loca into the opening okay that's how it's supposed to look and click off of it so you can see it without the blue lines and now you've got a window windows and doors starting to go in now instead of downloading the same window and doing all that again you can just copy this window and use it in other openings okay so I'm gonna copy that using my selector tool I'm gonna click on it so it turns blue okay then I'm gonna go up to my edit menu in your edit menu you will see that you can cut an object you can copy an object you can delete objects you can hide objects go to the copy click on copy then go back to your edit menu again and click on paste in place you can paste it anywhere and it will you might have a hard time finding it if you use paste in place you can find it really easy so click on paste in place then using your movement tool again click on that window and just slide it now you can see I've got two windows 
and I'm just going to click this window so that it goes right into that opening. And I may have to adjust it a little bit. I'm going to slide it over here so I can adjust it. Uh, and I'll use my zoom tool, my magnifying glass. And I'm going to zoom in. Using my movement tool, I'll hook on the corner of the window. And I'll just drag it right into place so that it fits exactly into that opening. Okay? That's a lot easier than downloading and ref and you know manipulating the window so that it fits I just saw it since these are both the same size and I'm going to show you even how to use these same windows in a bigger window over here okay so now I've got two windows that's looking pretty good I got two windows in the front and the door I'm gonna again since this is already selected I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna hit edit copy edit paste in place then I'm gonna use my movement tool and I'm gonna rotate around here so you can see what I'm doing here I'm gonna use my movement tool and I grab on that window and I'm gonna drag it over here onto this uh, edge on this wall right here uh, because I'm going to use that same window in this opening. So what I'm going to do now is I need to rotate that window using my rotation tool. I'm going to rotate that window around so that it goes in the right direction. Uh, sorry if you can't see this. I kind of know where it is, but there's the window over there. Oops, my rotation doesn't look right. So I'm going to hit edit, undo rotate. We'll rotate that again so you can see it. Using my rotation tool again on the blue axis. Make sure you start on the green axis if you're going to rotate for a general direction. And then rotate. You can see these little marks on here. That'll tell you when it's exactly on. If I'm over here, it's not on. If I'm over here, it's not on. But on that mark right there, I'm directly on rotating for around for a 90 degrees. Then using your movement tool, again, just grab it. Pull it over in your window opening. Now I'm going to have to resize this window, of course. But what I do before I resize it to make this easier, zoom in, grab the corner using your movement tool grab the corner of it and move it over into the top see the top right here it'll just automatically snap right into that location okay that makes it really simple now I've already got it located centered in one two sides of the window so that makes it easier to scale go up to tools use your scale again and I want to show you so you you really get this let's rotate this up okay tools scale and here I want to keep the window the same size width but I just want to pull it down in this direction. So grab in the middle middle box of the scale and pull it down until it's right on that edge right there. Then rotate. And I'm going to do the same thing to pull the window in this direction. Again, I'm going to hit Tools, Scale. I'm going to grab the center so it doesn't change the width of the window. I'm going to pull it right, right over to that line right there. Okay, now I've got a 4x4 four four window that matches and looks just like the rest of my window because all your windows in your house are generally made of the same materials by the same maker. Uh, so that just keeps me uh, looking good. So now I've got a window there, 4x4. Four four. I'm going to do the same thing to put this same window on the other side. What I'm going to do is hit click, click edit. I'm going to hit copy. I'm going to hit click edit again and hit paste in place. I'm going to rotate this around and I'm going to grab this window using my moving, moving uh, cursor. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to pull that second window right over there next to that opening. I'm going to rotate around here so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to grab the top of the window right there. And I'm going to locate it right into that opening. We'll see how well I did here. Oh, look at that. I'm pretty good. All right. I've got that located right in. But you can see that it's, it's setting in too far inside the window. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my magnifying glass okay, to zoom in. And I'm going to grab this corner of this using the movement tool again. I'm going to grab the corner of the door and I'm going to pull it out. Now it's level. It's even with the surface of the wall. So you can move these any way you want and uh, copy and paste and put in your doors and windows wherever you want. Now I'll click off of this using my selector tool. I'll just click up in the sky up here. That'll get rid of that. And let's get rid of these guidelines. These guidelines are driving me crazy. Go up to edit. Click on delete guide. Okay. Now I've got no more guidelines in there. I've got windows on the front and windows on the side. And you can see that you can see through the windows. Isn't that cool? You can actually look through the windows. If you want to be a peeping Tom, you can get right up in here and see inside the house through the windows. They, they work just like real glass. Okay. And that's your doors and windows. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this door and I'm going to copy that to the other side. So what I do again is I, I use my selector tool and I select it. Turns blue. Go up to my edit. Hit copy. Hit edit. Hit paste in place, rotate that around so I can see what I'm doing, use my movement tool, grab the door, click and grab, and drag it. I'm going to drag it over there next to that door opening. doesn't have to be exactly right in it. 
I usually do this in a couple of steps. That way I make sure I got my door exactly where I want it. And then I'm going to zoom in here just so you can see what I'm doing real well. Uh, I'm going to drag the bottom of this door, but I think I need to rotate this door first. Yep, see the bottom, the, the door should be facing the other direction. So I'm going to use the rotation tool again. Just click on your red axis, click and rotate it right around, completely around, so it's facing the right direction. Click again, that'll lock it. Then using your movement tool, I'm going to grab the back side of the door, and I'm just going to click it, and I'm going to drag it, so it goes right into that corner, and that should be a perfect fit if I did everything right. Yep, see that's a perfect fit. Don't have to do anything to resize that door, because it's the same size door hole on both sides. Okay, use your selector, and click anywhere on the ground to unselect that. Okay, now... I have a room, okay? I've got a room or the start of a small house. And you can see from the inside, I've got two doors. I've got two large windows on both sides. And I can rotate around here. I've got a door and two small windows on the front of the house. That's a tiny house. That's the basis. Now we're going to work on building a roof, okay? And I'm going to show you how to do a roof really, really easy here. Okay, so we've got the walls. Uh, doors and windows in. Now we need to put a roof on this and I'm going to show you an easy way to do a roof for these small houses here. Uh, first you want to rotate it in so you can see the front wall. This is going to be the end wall and I want my roof to run uh, pointed this direction uh, pitched over this wall here. So what you do is you just take your pencil go along your front wall line until you find the center point and it'll show you where the center point is. And then you're going to draw on the blue axis which is up and down. I'm going to draw and I'm going to go with a six foot high roof. Uh, you can go any height you want or whatever pitch you want, but I'm going to go with six feet on this small structure. And I'll back up here just so you can see where that line is. There's a the line right there. And then I'm going to take my pencil and from that point there I'm going to go down to the front point on the wall and you notice that it automatically encloses it. It gives me a little triangle here. It will enclose the panel. From that point I'm going to go down to the front point on the wall over here. Now I've got a front panel uh, with the right pitch that I want for my roof. Now I don't want this line in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that line out. I'm just going to click on it, select it, and erase to take that line out. Rotate this around so I can see on the inside. Using my push-pull tool, select on that wall, and I'm going to pull it in. Now I could pull it all the way across, but that would look stupid because we don't want a solid block roof. So what we want is roof panel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it right back until it's even with the wall, which is 4 inches, and then just let go, and it'll automatically stay there at 4 inches. Now I've got a roof end panel, but you can see it, it pulled the inside of this panel out. You can fix that. Just take your pencil and go to the one bottom corner of the triangle, and then go to the other bottom corner of the triangle and just click, and it will automatically fill that panel back in. Now you have the end wall with the pitch that you want for your roof. We're going to do the same exact thing on this side right here. Click with your pencil somewhere where it might meets the middle. There's your midpoint. And I'm going to go up six feet again and rotate this around so you can see it. And I'm going to connect with my pencil from this point down to the corner of the house. And again from this point down to this corner of the house. And I'm going to delete this line. We'll erase. And I'll rotate this around. And using my push-pull tool, again, I'm just going to pull this panel in so it is 4 inches. Same thickness as the wall. And using my pencil, I'll put the face back on this panel just by drawing a line across the bottom of it. That puts my face on. That's the easy way to pull roof panels, okay? Now I'm going to do the same th basic thing for the faces of the roof. Using my rectangle, I'm just going to go up to the inside corner of the roof panel to the opposite corner of the wall and I'm going to do that and that'll uh, create a panel there. Now you'll notice that it enclosed both sides. Again, if you enclose one side and the line is connected to another panel, it'll automatically close that. That's okay because I was going to do that anyway, right? I want both sides of my roof. So it went ahead and enclosed it for me. Now using your push-pull tool again, you're going to pull your roof out. Now you can decide however thick you want your roof. Generally, they're either 2x6s or 2x8s that you use in the frame. So you could have either an 8-inch thick roof or a 6-inch thick. Since this is a small house, I'd be using 2x6s. So I'm just going to type in 6 inches. And that'll pull that out to 6 inches for me. Doing the same thing on the other side, using my push-pull tool. I'm going to pull that over. 
six inches. And then these faces, I want to pull out so that they're even with the edge of the house first. Grab on the face and just pull it out, and it will automatically lock into the front at the same width as the house. Okay, and around on the other side, you got to do the same thing. I got to pull these faces, pull this face out, and pull this face out. And even though your mother told you not to pull faces, it'd stay like that. Well, that, that applies to SketchUp, too. When you pull a face, it stays like that. Okay, so, yeah, I've pulled those faces out. Now, a house generally has overhangs. It doesn't just go flat like this. So I'm going to pull an overhang. Using your push-pull tool, use it and grab on the face and pull your overhang however deep you want. I'm going to put a one-foot overhang because that would look good on this size house. And just click Return, and it'll automatically pull it out to one foot from there to there. I'm going to do the same thing, but I don't have to put any measurements. I'm just going to snap it out to that edge right there. That gives me a nice-looking overhang off the front of the house to protect the house and the windows from the sun and the wind and the rain. Rotate this around. I'm going to do the same exact thing on the other end using my push-pull tool. Grab the face, pull it out, type in one foot. Using the same thing, I'm going to push-pull this wall out so it just matches up with that. Okay? That's how you, you create a roof. Your roof is going to be six inches thick, and your panels are going to be four inches based on two by fours, and you got your panels. Now, they also, most houses also usually have an overhang off the side here so that the rain doesn't run right down your roof. So you can do the same exact thing, pull an overhang, or what they call an eave. You can just grab on the face and pull it down. Let's go eight inches on these. That'll look good. So now I've got an overhang off my roof there. Do the same thing on this side using my push-pull tool. I'm going to pull an overhang of 8 inches on that side. Now I've got 8-inch overhang and a 1-foot uh, overhang off the front and the back side of the house. Now it's looking like a house. All we've got to do is paint this. So I'm going to grab my paint can next, and we'll go ahead and paint these surfaces. Okay, so we've got our roof on our house, but... Uh, it won't look like a house until we get some roofing material and get this painted up, right? So let's go back up to our uh, paint can, and we'll go, let's go uh, look at some roofing material. In our menu over here, click on where it says roofing, and let's go with metal roofing on this. That'll look good. And we're just going to paint these with metal roofing, both sides. Now, if you don't like that color, remember I said you can change the color. If you don't want a red roof, just click on Edit, and maybe you want a green roof. Uh, maybe that's not. Maybe that's a little bit too bright. So maybe that. May, there we go. A forest d green dark roof looks pretty good. Okay, so I've got the roof paneled, uh, painted already, and I want to paint these end walls the same uh, material as I used on the house. So using my paintbrush again. Now I'm going to use my. Uh, eyedropper and I'm going to just select that material and then I'll go back and paint it and that way I don't have to mess around and make sure that it's the right color it'll automatically be the exact same material and color again using my paint can paint bucket uh, paint those the same color now I also want to paint these eaves on the house and in order to make it match so it looks good I'm going to paint the eaves the exact same color as the door so using my eyedropper I just click on the door and you can see that it paints the material up here, which is oak. And I'm going to use that oak material, that color. And I'm just going to paint these edges on these doors, these eaves, that color. And you'll have to rotate around. And this is where your magnifying glass zoom comes in real handy, because you're going to have to zoom in on some areas in order to paint them. And I'm going to paint these down here. Now you'll notice, I'm going to zoom in here you'll notice that when I pulled the roof down, it pulled these lines in too. It, it, it just does that sometimes. It's nothing to worry about. All you need to do is just go ahead and paint that surface first. Uh, otherwise, you'll lose your paint when you erase these lines. Just use your selector, click on the line, turn it blue, and erase it. This is just for looks more than anything because I don't want those ugly-looking uh, lines in there. Back up, and we'll go around on the other side. And we'll have to do the same thing. Let's paint this surface. And we'll rotate it up. And you can see I've got lines there. Let's paint the surfaces first. And we'll zoom in with our magnifying glass. Pull it around here so we can see. 
and I want to get rid of those two lines so again I'm just going to use my selector select the lines and click off of them erase those two lines so I got a nice clean surface now on the peak of the roof when we pulled it we got one line uh, but we didn't get a line going the other direction so just to make this look nice I'm just going to draw a line that matches that line so it gives me a nice clean peak up there looks nice looks professional okay drag this over here to the other side of the house got to do some painting on this side too can't just paint one side of the house okay so I've got that painted and that and that face and I'm gonna rotate this around and I'll paint that underneath there rotate this around and you can see that I need to paint underneath the eaves here I got the same problem I got to paint that little spot and then get rid of those lines so I'm gonna paint that first I'd paint it otherwise you lose your paint and then click on that line till it turns blue and erase it and erase it and I'm probably gonna have to do the same thing to the other side I bet over here yep sure enough so I'll zoom in and move it up paint that little spot and then using my selector I'll just erase those lines and I'll probably have to do the peak the same way on this side yep just draw a line from there up to there and you'll notice the line turns pink that's to show that it's perpendicular to this line right here and it'll just snap up in there so you can just draw a nice nice line okay I've got my eaves painted I've got the whole sides of the house painted the front I've got a roof on it that looks like a house there's the back there's the front windows and doors okay that's a small structure all right now uh, when you get it to this point you you probably want to turn off these guides just to see what it looks like without the guides you can turn the guides these axis off or on go up here to view and click where it says axis just click that and that turns off the axis okay so now that house on the outside is done okay and in the next lesson I'm going to show you how to do the inside of the house and how to make modules so you can take things off and put them back on to show other people but uh, this house looks like it's floating in the air that's no good we don't want a house that floats in the air so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on some ground what I do is I just uh, back it up zoom it out, zoom it out a little bit then take your rectangle and wherever you want your land I want my property to start about right there just drag your rectangle over and now you've got a piece of property now using your paint bucket again go up where it says uh, uh, where your menu is for the different materials and choose vegetation and then I like artificial grass that looks pretty good and so I'm just going to choose artificial grass I'm going to paint that house with art paint the ground with artificial grass now my house isn't floating anymore all right now it's on a piece of ground and now I will be able to put trees and landscaping on here which I'll show you how to do also in one of the lessons I'll show you how to download trees uh, people you can even put animals in here you can do anything you want with your landscaping but there's the basic house you've got the roof windows doors and you've got the the outside structure in the next lesson I will show you how to remove the roof and then we'll start putting furniture in, interior walls decorations and do the landscaping in the next lesson all right folks that's it for part one go to part two and watch that uh, get you a copy of Google SketchUp and start working on it understanding how all these basic commands work up here all right have a great day everybody